What is going on, good people? Welcome back to the Contractor Secrets Podcast. Here with another episode, I want to give you guys some insight on what I got going on. The main topic today is about the subtleties in business communication. We can't forget that a key component to a thriving relationship in any endeavor is communication, right? You, you and your significant other, you and your family, right? You and your customers. It's the, it's it, all business is is human interaction done at a high level, getting people to feel the feelings that you wish them to feel in the moment of which you wish them to feel them, right? So in other words, when you go to an estimate and you do a, a really great job, you want them to feel the excitement that you portray to, those, to that individual so much so that they believe in what you're selling. That is business in a nutshell. And what we do is we break that down into tiny elements throughout the entire process to create one big feeling. And you need to be a student of this if you want to win. This has to be something that you focus on. This has to be something that you believe in, right? So I'm so passionate about it that I created a software around it because I understand how important this is. It's not something that you just you know, brush off lightly. The perception of your customers is everything, right? So you have to understand, like, what type of perception am I creating in my business? Well, I'll start with what happens when someone calls your business right now. And this is usually how we start off every drip jobs demo because we know this is a big problem. And generally speaking, it goes like this. If someone called you right now during this demo, how would you handle it? Where would you put the information, right? These are the subtleties in business. There's administrative subtleties. There's communicate, communication related subtleties. And really you look at the big picture of a business. You say, well, the business is failing. I'm not selling enough. People aren't buying what I'm selling. And you might say, well, how's your pricing? You know, and it's like, there's so much more than that. And I want to get into those today uh, in this episode because it's so important. We can't, we can't forget really the subtleties. It's so important. So, so how do you answer the phone? Well, generally speaking, I answer the phone and, and, you know, we begin talking about their project. That's usually what we hear. But then I want to dive a little bit deeper. What's the interaction like when you answer the phone? How do you answer? When I worked at the bank, I used to say, hey, thank you so much for calling so-and-so credit union. This is Tanner. How may I help you? And you might think, Tanner, I'm not doing that. Okay, well, don't sell things. I don't know what to tell you, right? Perception is everything. There's a motto that I loved when I first started my business is when, when you are small, act big. But when you're big, act small, right? It's such a good way to look at your business. If you're a small business and it might be just you, the perception that you create to the employees that you're trying to hire is so important, right? You don't want someone that you're really excited about hiring to know that for the last six months, you've been busting your tail 70 hours a week, working by yourself, struggling to move the money around. And you, you don't want that. And you probably wouldn't say that. You're probably going to create the perception of a new great opportunity, right? And that's okay as long as you fulfill the demands of the promise. That's the kicker. Okay, so it's important to fulfill the demands of the promise. Fulfill your promises, okay? So how do you answer the phone? All right, so you have a decent greeting, okay? Well, if the greeting isn't exceptional, you're already setting the tone for the entire sale, okay? It's funny, I just called, I had a chiropractor, and when he answered the phone, he said, hey, Tanner. And right off the bat, my head, my brain was like, Oh, that was cool. He remembered my name and or he stored my information and or he cares about how I feel about how his business is perceived. Old school guy, okay? Probably doing really well because of that because it's so rare for people to make people feel important, right? So obviously on the initial call, you might not know their name, but what's stopping you from saving that contact so if they call again, you can answer it with more effectiveness. Hey, Miss Smith, how you doing? How can I help? Right? So you got to be thinking about these subtleties in business and how communication happens. Okay, so let's say they do contact you and you do get their information. Where does that information go and what happens next? This is something that you should be thinking about. Every single person has ever called you for an estimate has given you a batch of information. That information is the first name. <laughs> the last name, generally speaking, the email, 
the phone number. Oh yeah, don't forget the address. Where are you putting it? Okay, how much do you really care? Are you just jotting it into your calendar app on your phone? Are you writing it down in a notepad? And please tell me, you're not telling the customer to text you their information. How unprofessional is that? If you called a doctor's office and you said, hey, I'd like to be seen, and they say, great, Tanner, do me a favor, text us your information. You'd be like, what? That's weird. Why is it weird? Because all the doctor's offices have already bought into the program of that is not professional. Professional is, please hold, let me gather your information. Or, hey, I'm going to go ahead and send you a secure link. Please fill out the information. Okay? There's a system behind it. There's a reason for doing it. Not, hey, text me your information and I'll look at my calendar. Okay? These subtleties matter. And guess what? If the answering of the phone suck and the process to gather information suck, you're 0 for 2. <laughs> okay? Right? What do they say? First impressions are what? Everything. So if you're not taking first impressions seriously, don't expect your customer to take your business seriously when you come with that fat price that everyone else is talking about they're getting in your, in your little mastermind groups or your Facebook group, right? And wonder why it's not happening because no one's really diving into the details about what I'm talking to you about right now. This may be one of the most important podcasts you listen to, to at least create some awareness about the subtleties and the way that people perceive you. Perception is everything. How do you answer the phone? What's the process for gathering information? How many times have you gathered the information over and over and over and over and over and over and over again? And told yourself, there's got to be a better way. This isn't efficient. Then, once the customer hangs up with you, what happens? This is another big one. Do they get a follow-up text, a follow-up email? Do they hear from you again until the moment that you knock on the door? This isn't good. Generally speaking, what I've learned in business is the more time that goes by, the more time it creates for people to think. And generally speaking, they're not thinking about how excited they are to spend money. (laughs) They're usually thinking about what they could be spending the money on outside of what you're trying to sell them, okay? Or they're doubting, right? Or they're just uncertain. Hey, are you, do do you remember we booked a painting estimate last week? Or do you think they're still coming? Do you want your customers to be having that sort of conversation? You know what I want my customers to be saying? Honey, I just got an email from the painter that we requested an estimate for, and he's literally telling us all the questions that we should ask him. (laughs) That's super creative. That's the conversation I want happening with my customers, okay? I want you to understand that those three elements that we went over, you might have lost them. I'm going to go back. First thing is that initial phone greeting. These are the subtleties in business. Number one, initial phone greeting. Stop worrying about what people think about you, okay? If you can't answer the phone with enthusiasm, energy, and excitement, you shouldn't be in business. The phone's ringing. Somebody wants to give you money. Why aren't we excited about that anymore? I bet you're excited the first week, maybe the first two weeks of your business. Why aren't we excited about it anymore? You're not, you know why? Because the process that you have in place to organize your customer stresses you out, okay? That's probably why. Or you haven't done what you need to do to position your your business in a way that can handle the demand. So part of you probably thinks, I can't even get to this anyway. Maybe, maybe worse, you're just hanging up on your customer. I know it to be true, so it sucks, but it's true, right? So from there, how do we garnish the information? How do we get it? What are we doing? Are we writing it down on an old yellow notepad in the car when we're driving? Are we asking them to text us? Please tell me no, right? Do we have a professional system in place to send out a text message and an email to the customer confirming the information that just came in, letting them know we received it so they have a feeling of completion on their side? Compassion and empathy is so important in business. Understanding what it feels like to be on the other side of that phone call has helped me tremendously. There's been people that I have called, scheduled an estimate, 
never heard from him again. Couldn't even tell you the name of the business. Why? Because nowadays people are just going on Google and calling down the line. It's not like they're like, oh, Apple, or they know you as a big brand, Walmart, right? They don't know. They don't, your brand isn't that big. Okay. And it won't be that big yet until you get way beyond this point here. Um, but generally speaking, they're just calling painters. They're calling roofers. They're calling, you know, granite installation companies, flooring companies, right? They're just going down the list on Google. Most cases, right? Whenever you get a, a cold phone call from someone, it's usually just somebody did quick research because they recognize they had a, a high need. They're not researching your company for months. So they call you. You need to make it a lasting impression. So they circle your company's name on the calendar because it's like that one sounded really good. They got me excited about my project. This is what's helped me win. If I get you on the phone and you're telling me you're moving in, first thing I'm saying is congratulations. Are you excited? Do you know much about Ocala? Oh, okay, cool. I've been here for X amount of years, right? Do you know much about this area? Hey, have you, have you heard of the good restaurants? They're like, what is, no, I haven't. What are some good ones, right? Selling is about making people feel that you care more about their end goal than your own end goal, okay? We know you want to sell jobs. It'll happen, but it's going to be really hard if you're just focused on yourself. Stop being selfish, right? Create a system. Think about areas in those subtleties that aren't doing well and improve them, okay? We talk about hiring a lot. We talk about sales a lot, marketing, the big ones. But within the administration portion of your business, which is also a, the, the big one, it's the, the stepchild that doesn't get much love, okay? But it's important, part of the family. You got to love it. <laughs> you got to take care of them, right? That's admin. That's the, that's the one that gets no glory. The admin portion of your business is one of the four legs of the table. If the admin portion of your business is failing, then everything fails right? No organization, no system in place. Here's, a, here's an idea. If you don't like answering the phone, hire someone that does. Stop answering the phone. Stop thinking that you need to answer the phone. And man, I hired, when I hired someone to answer the phone for my business, game changer. It was awesome. I still enjoy it to this day every time a phone call comes in. I personally don't like answering the phone at this stage of my life. <laughs> Been doing this for eight years now, going on nine. I don't want to answer phone calls for the painting business anymore. I will, and I can do it at a high level. But what I did was, is I did it. I documented what I did, and then I delegated. Do document, delegate. You guys know I talk about that. So important. But you have to be the one to do it first. You can't teach someone something you haven't done. If I came on here having this little podcast, and I never started a painting business, you probably wouldn't be listening to it, okay? You probably wouldn't care because you'd be like, he is not qualified to tell me how to start a business. He hasn't been through the same struggles that I have. He doesn't understand me. So I'm on my own. I'll find someone else. So it's the same thing with every area of your business. You need to be the expert first. You need to document what you did, delegate it, and hopefully let someone outshine you. Now at this stage, Teresa, who answers the phone for my business, is way better on the phone than me. She has way more patience. She loves talking to people. And she takes really good notes, okay? So all of those things I struggled with because my attention is in so many different areas, okay? If you don't want to do that, get someone to do it. Second, number two, how do you get information? When someone calls you in drip jobs, you can send them a link, okay? The link is so important because the link gets all the information that you need, including some that you add, right? So if you call me, I say, hey, I'm going to send you a link. Go ahead and click it and fill out the information. I get people that tell me, Tanner, what if they don't fill it out? Well, then they probably weren't committed. <laughs> you know, Drip Jobs did you a favor. Most people fill it out. 99% fill the thing out. It's normal. Call Verizon lately, right? Call these big companies. They're having you click things. They're having you interact with your email and your, your text message on the phone call. Because why? It's more efficient. So you send the link. They fill it out. And then, of course, what happens on the back end, two things. Number one, for you as the business owner, you get all the information neatly stored in the CRM exactly where it should be. Seven automations kick off. Two of those automations are communication. Those communication elements go to the customer, email, text message, confirmation. What does that do for the customer? Number one, 
it releases dopamine because if they were tasked to do something during the day, which was to get the estimate for the painting job that needs to be done, the confirmation is you confirming that so they could check it off the box. And anytime you have a to-do list and you check something off, it's a small release of dopamine. <laughs> so that's why I say that because without that, there's still this level of uncertainty. Like, did they get the information? Did they write it down? When are they coming? Then we trigger reminders to the customer to let them know when we'll be there, okay? And remind them. So we respect people's time and the system does all this, right? Otherwise, you have to do it manually, which you don't have the time for and you probably wouldn't do it efficiently unless you set a timer on your phone to remind you when to remind someone for their appointment, which I doubt you're doing, okay? So drip job solves a lot of these problems, right? So what about after hours and on the weekends, right? So again, we're just talking subtleties here. We're not even going into the production side of business, the, the late sales cycle, okay? We're just talking subtleties. And I want to highlight some things, some holes in your business that more often than not exist, okay? So here's, here's my other, this is one of my other pitches for this because it's so important. What if I go to your website and it's 10 o'clock at night on Saturday, okay? And the only option on your website is to fill out one of those old archaic contact forms that take my information. It usually says, fill out the form to contact them. And it says first name, last name, maybe email, maybe phone number, and what service I want. Exterior painting, interior painting, right? So I fill it out. And it says, thank you, your form has been submitted, right? If this is your website, you should be laughing right now and you should be thinking, you got me, Tanner. Because what happens is, is you're not gonna contact that person until Monday, probably afternoon. And the reason why is because you don't wanna contact someone on a Sunday. You don't wanna contact someone on a Monday morning because you're busy. And by the time you remember, it's Monday afternoon, okay? So... That's a little over 36 hours that goes by between the time the customer went to your website, filled out your form, and you contact them. That is too much time in today's day and age. Remember, there's no loyalty when it comes to your services because why? There's 100 different options. So whoever is the quickest to react, the quickest to engage, the quickest to really get them through the pipeline has probably the highest chance of winning simply because people buy two things, speed, convenience, and experience. I want to operate both, but in most cases, if I'm winning the speed and convenience game, generally speaking, you're going to pay more simply because you recognize that I'm efficient, right? There's a lot of psychology behind this. On the flip side, if you don't contact me, I have doubt, I have fear, and I'm wondering, do I have to do work for this company? Or are they serving me, right? Imagine going to a cruise ship, going on a cruise, and you have to serve yourself all the food. You have to go back and cook it. You have to go and clean everything every day, right? That's not much of a vacation. That's a working cruise. No one would sign up for that, okay? <laughs> Unless it's free, right? But to pay premium dollar for that? No, you're not going to do that, okay? So... There's a lot there, right? There's a lot of psychology behind this. How about when someone calls you and, they, and you missed the call? What happens now, right? Does it just say missed call on your phone and then you just don't call back? These are opportunities that could be just slipping through the cracks. I tell people, we use open phone. Why do we use it? It has an automation built in, okay? There's an affiliate link somewhere in the bio of this message. There's an affiliate link and what that does uh, not the affiliate, the affiliate link gives you money and gives me money. But the open phone, uh, if someone misses, if there's a missed call, it sends out a text message to the customer. And it says, thank you so much for reaching out. If you're calling to schedule an estimate, click this link. And it has my drip jobs link built in it. So there's no lapse in between the time that they call and they can complete their task and their mission without me having to do anything. I can't tell you, this has happened hundreds of times. Missed calls on the weekend, at night, right? And on Google, we say that our business is open 24-7. We want people to call us at all times. But I don't need a person there. 
I have automations for that. These are the subtleties in business. And really what we want is we want the details on the initial interaction to be at the highest level. I would argue that my business's details on the initial interaction are top 10% in the country simply because we have automation. So we use automation as leverage, right? And we've thought about every single way someone can interact with our business. And you should be a student of that. How do they find you? Okay, what, 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 are, what road are they traveling on? Are they traveling on Facebook? Are they traveling on Google? Are they traveling through your website? Are they traveling through the phone? Are they, are they knocking on your door? You know, for most cases, no, but they could. What happens if you have a shop and someone comes to your door? Do you have anything if the, if the, if the shop is closed to let them achieve their goal? If I were you, I'd put a QR code outside and said, hey, if we missed you, scan this, right? <laughs> Some people do that. Think about all the ways people can interact with you and then be the customer and think, would this stop me from buying from this person or is this an inefficient process? Nothing is worse than when you call a business and they don't answer the phone. It's like, hold on a second. I read your reviews. I think you're good. I even maybe heard about you and you didn't answer the phone. I just had an applicant that I thought was good. He, he didn't answer the phone. Right, we were doing it. We were going to do a phone interview. He went through the first few stages of my hiring process. He made it to the phone interview. He didn't answer the phone. Didn't call back. Right. Well, what am I going to do? Keep chasing him? No, I'm going to go to somebody else. That's the subtleties because he missed the call. If he really wanted a job and he was like hungry for a job, my assumption is is that he'd at least call back and make sure it wasn't an opportunity that slipped through the cracks. These are the subtleties, okay? So I can't emphasize this enough. I could probably go on for another hour. We're going to just stop right here because I want you to think about how people find you and then what happens when they get there. What's the experience like? What are the subtleties? I had to have opened up your eyes to a few areas of your business that are lacking. And I want you to think of it from a high-end customer perspective. Someone that identifies and works with higher-end businesses and companies and is used to a great experience. And when you give someone a foreign experience that isn't better, it's worse, they tend to shy away from you, right? In order to survive in this business, you need to be selling your jobs for more than the competitors. It's the only way to do it because there'll be nothing left over for profit and growth. How do you do this? You've got to be able to get people to justify paying more for your services than someone else. It has to happen. If it doesn't happen, you don't get to grow. The only way to do this is to separate ourselves before they buy, okay? Because after they buy, they already bought. So you got to think, okay, well, if I'm trying to get someone to spend more for me than someone else, then how do I get them to do that? What would be their case to be able to do that? And it's the interactions they have with our business. It's the four or five times they talk to us before we hand them a quote. And they come up with a calculation that says, according to my calculations, I can either trust this company and they'll over deliver, or it's risky to hire this company and they'll under deliver, or this other company is going to deliver the same result. I can't justify paying your company more. There's only so many interactions that can happen. I would say on the bare minimum, someone calls you, you get their information, and then you just knock on their door. That's one interaction. Think about, I want you to think about this. You're a listener to this podcast, okay? Listen, I want you to think about the last few times you did an estimate. How many interactions were there? The initial phone call, you booked an estimate, and then you went to the house and you knocked on the door. There was one interaction. One. Now I would, okay, fine. You could say that the interaction you had during the estimate. Okay, fine. That's like a half interaction because the other half of the interaction is selling. So that's where they make the decision. In my business, let me walk you through it. Okay, you're going to like this. Somebody comes in and calls us. That's the first interaction. And we focus so heavily on that. It's a great interaction. The second interaction is an automated drip message that goes out telling them our story. The third interaction is another automated drip message building trust and showcasing the different questions they should be asking us during the estimate. Another interaction is the reminder to let them know their estimate is scheduled one day before. Another interaction is a 
uh, another reminder an hour before, and then we knock on the door. So that's like five interactions. But each time one of those interactions come through, the, if you can think of the step ladder of trust, 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 trust. When the estimator gets to the door, they don't have to come up with, do I trust you? It's like, okay, I already trust you. Now tell me what you do, right? Again, this is just psychology behind sales. Anyone can implement this system. Generally speaking, drip jobs is going to do most of this for you, but it's not so much just signing up for drip jobs. It's putting in the time to think about what your message is for your company. And that's only one avenue. If someone comes in through Facebook, they might get a lot more interactions, right? But those interactions build trust. They build value, right? Think about this. If you had your homeowner and you hired someone to do a service or you were seeking someone to do a service, you and I both know that if they interacted this way, you would be impressed. That's what it comes down to. You are a buyer too. The best sellers are the best buyers, okay? That's what I got for you guys. Um, yes, this was a drip jobs pitch with a lot of value, okay? You could try to figure it out on your own. Don't do that, okay? And for those of you that are drip jobs users, we did talk a lot about other areas of the business that need to improve that are not so much drip jobs related, which is the phone, okay? Which is your ability to delegate because there's levels to subtleties, right? There's levels to you doing it all. And then of course, passing it on to someone else is another level, right? So these are things that you need to be focusing on. So focus on the acquisition of customer data. And then of course, be your customer, right? Think about what that feels like to, to, to interact with your business. Hope you got something out of this. Appreciate the support. We'll catch you on the next one.